What is up, everybody? We are back for day two of the Liga Runterra de las Americas, and uh, we got Sapo Player versus Omega Drax here. Boy, this game was pretty good. This does go to a third game, so super excited, again, to be able to bring this to you guys. Um, as always, my name is Justin, also known as Shit Just Works, and yeah, let's just go ahead and get into the game plan. They usually do pretty well, be it Spooky Karma, War Mother's Control, any kind of Aurelian Soul deck, especially Ram Soul. Like, if you bring a late-game deck to a tournament, you're generally going to do pretty well with it. And I do like to watch War Mothers. It's a little bit fun. You know, it, it is just sitting there for most of the game doing nothing, getting out the War Mothers. But having that sort of coin flip at the start of every turn and getting to see what pops out is, is pretty fun as a caster. Yeah, no, definitely. I got to agree with you there. And it uh, looks like we are getting started here with Game 1, Omega Drax versus, well... In Discord, he's a level 3 Magikarp, but in this game, he is Sapo player. So just a heads up, we do have Omega Drax playing a level 3 Magikarp right now. It's happening. We're in front of our eyes. <laughs> Except his name is Sapo player. <laughs> Sapo <laughs> player. <laughs> so, uh, but all right, let's see. We have the Aurelian Soul, the one and only deck that is seemed to have popped up everywhere now for Aurelian Soul with uh, this Lux... Aurelian Soul deck. Uh, I do not have the deck list up because I have both of the games instead. So uh, is there any Leona in here? There's not any Leona in here, but there are some interesting adaptations. There's no Spacey Sketcher, which is something that we typically see to, you know, discard these extra Solaris that you get at the start of your game. Or later on in the game, like, oh, man, I drew my Solari Soldier really late. Let me go ahead and discard that to a Spacey Sketcher. But there's also no Solari Priestess. So there's not going to be as much Celestial generation as we typically see out of a deck like this. Instead, going for the full suite of cantrips in Pale Cascade and Guiding Touch. So the thing's going to be a little bit harder to remove on the side of Sapo player and has gone for Blinding Assault to get that Blinding Assault Radiant Guardian combo that we've seen pop up so long ago in these Lux decks. I think you just like saying the word cantrip. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's what I've decided on. <laughs> Um, I do want to apologize too that I guess Sapple Player is not a level three Magic card because I know sometimes the in-game name is different. That's why I thought it was the same person. Um, I know that was oh that's no level three Magic in the other in the yeah, other yeah sorry I I got confused that's with the Discord up. yeah it's Water Shuriken in Discord yep. that's why okay yeah I, I knew they had a different name yeah that's my yep. bad so I do apologize this is not a level three Magic Carp as much as I would have loved to see a level three Magic Carp in real life <laughs> so. It looks like we do have the very early Swain, though, on the side of Omega Drax. And uh, going to throw down the Daybreak unit here to go ahead and at least provide some sort of fearsome blocker with the Solari Soldier. Okay, and yeah, uh, this is weird to me. I, I feel like I would have rather thrown down my Solari Shield Bearer first if I was going to play both of them in the same turn. Just because that, if my opponent does still attack with the Swain, at least I don't lose my unit. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a little bit of a weird ordering to me, but I understand, you know, you probably want one of these to get blocked next turn, get your Radiant Guardian down. And if that doesn't happen, you still want to be pushing a fair amount of damage. And, you know, if you attack here, if Sapo goes for an open attack and you just push five damage at your opponent and they're like, no, I'm going to play around the Radiant Guardian, you can't get that down. Sapo just gets to put a Lux on the field. And that feels just as good, if not better. Yeah, getting a Lux down on the side of Sapo is going to be incredible for him this game, uh, especially if he's going to be able to remove this Swain early on. We do see the TF, the TF that we are now considering about taking out, uh, according to Boulevard. So <laughs> I don't I don't know, man. I feel like that's too early to call after this patch. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if there's a different iteration of Swain Leviathan. Because like we talked about this before the patch, too. It's just Swain Leviathan, like, or sorry, before Call of the Mountain came out, I should say. Uh, that everybody was just going to take Swain and Leviathan and just try to jam it into as many possible combinations as they could. But interestingly enough, everybody is just stuck with the TF. So maybe now they'll start experimenting with, uh, with a few more things. So we'll see if it's able to pick up a victory here versus what is probably one of the most popular decks in the game right now. I think that the Twisted Fate is still really good. You know, any deck where you have barrel generation, I'm going to be a fan of Twisted Fate. That red card can completely yeah. swing the tide of a game, as we're going to see it do here. Not totally swing it, but it is going to pave the way for the Swain. So if Sapo wants to stop that extra damage coming through, is going to need to throw down something. Has a couple of good blockers for it, but I'm actually just going to see Guiding Touch straight away to go ahead and protect one of these units. 
in order to keep that around, not have to commit something like our Lux and get its spell sh or get its barrier popped, and then find ourselves in a bit of an awkward situation. Yeah, we do see the Radiant Guardian hitting the field. One of the best, if not the best, five. Would you call it the best five drop in the game? I'd have to look at the five drops. Oh. I want to say no, but I'm trying to think of what I think is better. As far as followers, I think it's inarguably going to say, yeah, it's it's got to be Radiant Guardian. Yeah, I was just going to say not including champions. Um, so, yeah, but even like, I mean, damn, even if you compare it to something like Gangplank, it's actually like in discussion which i don't feel like a, a follower should even be in a discussion with a champion that's the same cost of it but um in certain situations i mean lifesteal and tough are just really really good so that depends how do we feel about uh trifarian assessor as a five drop <laughs> oh wow i is, forgot about that is that just the best five drop? i forgot about that i mean i i don't know i don't know it's definitely a good card but radiant guardian man tough i, I mean I, so looking at the five drops, uh, as you know, I have always sung the praises of Abyssali. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. Every time, I feel like it's ever since you actually said that to me, to be honest. I, I feel like I always look at Abyssali outside of deep now. Like when I go through my collection of deck yeah. building, I look at it and I'm like, wait, this is just a 3-3 three, three elusive that draws a card. Can, should I yeah. just play this? Like, is this good? <laughs> so... Anytime I put, like, even when we were um, sort of playing Swip, Slippery Wave Rider and Zap Sprayfin in the NAB decks, or even things like the, you know, Fizz uh, Twisted Fate deck that completely fell off with the release of Hush, I always think, would Abyssali be better? I don't get the mana, but getting that draw seems pretty good. <laughs> we do see the Radiant Guardian go in here. Uh, it's going to lifesteal back up to 18 and, and one of the other good things about this deck in particular with the aurelian soul and the lux and the, the way that it's built is you do have star shaping we don't see any in hand but uh star shaping and sometimes uh the cantrips as you call them like guiding touch uh they can also heal up something like radiant guardian and being able to heal up a tough unit i feel has a lot of value oh absolutely we saw it with karma Ezreal, the, like a couple of them were splashing Vi's and then you could have the health potion onto the Vi would just completely mm. blow a matchup wide open. What I kind of want to talk about here is the hush that we see in the hand of Sappho player. Mm. This has kind of been the card of the week. A lot of players disappointed that it didn't get touched in the upcoming balance patch or the balance patch that just happened. Mm -hmm. Not super hopeful for the balance patch that they have outlined for it next patch where additional copies might end up costing more or something along those lines. I think that one of the big strengths of Twisted Fate Swain is Hush doesn't feel like a super effective card in this matchup. Uh, no, I got to agree with you. I mean, sure, it, it does its job by kind of negating something for a turn. Uh, you know, maybe you uh, allow yourself to block a Swain that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to block, you know, with a non-fearsome unit. Or maybe you prevent a uh, Twisted Fate level up you know, at some <laughs> point. Like, I don't, like, I don't know. It, it's really, it's, it's not, I agree with you. It's not that great. Um, I think Hush in general, though, I'm up in the air as to whether or not I like that card. I think that, it, it makes it so that you it's a little bit harder now to build a deck around one pillar champion and have that as a win condition. <coughs> Ezreal. <coughs> um, but yeah, so we'll see if it makes an impact here in this game. And uh, we do see the Lux finally hitting the field on the side of Sapo. Does have six mana available. Not sure if he's going to be able to proc it on this turn, though. Regardless of how bad Hush is in a matchup, in the Lux Aurelian Soul deck, it feels so good because it is just something that you can fire off multiples of in order to get a bunch of lasers. Now, personally, my experience with Hush hasn't been nearly as bad as the general community seems to have been. I haven't had any major issues with the card, I mean, but I mean, obviously, I don't play as much as people. I spend a lot more time watching Legends of Runeterra than the average player instead of playing, so I don't run into these frustrating situations as much. And here we are going to see just these combination of three-cost spells. The Hush only going to be used once just because, I mean, what else are we going to Hush on the board? Maybe take the Elusive Attacker away, maybe take the Quick Attack off the Twisted Fate. None of that sounds as good as saving my Radiant Guardian from this Ravenous Flock. Yep, saving your Radiant Guardian from anything feels good because that card is, it basically just keeps you in the game. And when you're playing something like Aurelian Soul, having a card that just lets you stick around until turn 10, turn 11, turn 12 uh, is good. Not only that, Aurelian Soul's level up, you need 20 power on board and Radiant Guardian gets you halfway there. And you know what's interesting too? I know we talk about the, uh, I know somebody mentioned it in chat too, and I always forget which dragon is which. Screeching dragon. Thank you. <laughs> Screeching dragon. The one that has fury, that has challenger, that is a 4-5. Um, you know, I'd be interested to see if that comes up a little bit more in some of these ASOL decks because A, you can get it with Remembrance a lot. 
and B, it powers itself up with Fury, which actually does come into play with leveling up Aurelian Soul, as does, you know, Aurelian Soul having Fury himself, but, uh, but anyways, Riptide Rex coming down, wrecking the board, getting some value, getting rid of that sweet, sweet Lux, unfortunately, for Sappa. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about the, just kind of going back to this, the Screeching Dragon myself, because I feel like Dragon's Clutch is something that wouldn't necessarily be super unreasonable to play if you just have Aurelian Soul and Screeching Dragon in your deck and kind of would let you go down on the amount of copies that you play of Aurelian Soul. Even if you draw all your dragons, you can give them that plus one, plus one. Worst case scenario, you fire it off as a Lux Activator so you don't have to use things like the Hush. That was more or less useless that we saw Sappho player have to throw out. And seeing the Fleeting Hush get ended in Sappho player's hand reminded me of another use of the Spacey Sketcher, which is actually just discarding copies of Fleeting Spells that you aren't casting anymore that turn. Yeah, I feel like I feel like everybody forgets about that, right? Like, if you have a fleeting card in hand, you can actually use it as a discard. I feel like the fact that it's fleeting makes you think it doesn't really exist, even though it does. Like, it's it's just definitely not thing. an interaction that you think about when you're putting yeah. the cards in the deck. Yep. Uh, but I, I do I do like Spacey Sketcher. If you have things that aren't good in the late game, like the early Solaris, uh, Sappa player, of course, going for the three Solaris Soldier, not necessarily something that we're seeing in every version. The Shield Bear, uh, definitely going to be, you know, across the board, something that we're going to see. But now the Traveler is going to come down. What are we going to get? Not a great suite. I feel like maybe we just go for another copy of the Traveler because if we take this written in stars and hit our third Aurelian Soul, that's going to feel pretty awkward. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say, you know, I, I usually give the Aurelian Soul deck, every, every time we see it, I usually say, all right, playing the three is usually the way to go, especially in the mirror match. You want that third Aurelian Soul. But it does feel awkward a lot of the times getting multiple Aurelian Souls in your hand. And uh, what I will say, where are we going to see the skies descend? Just play it. Just Sappo. If you're <laughs> listening, just play the card. I don't even care if, if you lose the game or win the game. Just play the card. I just want to see it go off. I want to see the animation. Let's see it. I mean, looking at Drax's hand, he really doesn't have great follow-up if his board does end up getting wiped by this and doesn't have the draw power to level the Twisted Fate. And that's something that I really like about this Lux Asol deck is that traditionally, uh, or not, rather not traditionally, initially, Twisted Fate Swain felt like it rose to prominence because everybody was trying these cool new Targon decks and you just didn't have any way to deal with the Twisted Fate. You could hush it, but there really wasn't that much removal. You had a couple challengers, but there were ways to protect it. This Demacia deck has so much removal. This Twisted Fate will never stick around. It will never be a realistic win condition for the Twisted Fate Swain deck. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, uh, Omega Drax at this point very much needs a level up Twisted Fate. It might help him a little bit here, uh, but definitely and not going to just straight out win him the game. Sapo even has another active Radiant Guardian online if he wants to decide to play one of these and I, I gotta say too, this silence card, the uh, Equinox, the Celestial that you get, the one cost, so good. I, I feel like this is very, it's a very underrated card. I feel like a lot of people, that's probably the card that's three or less that you always want to try to get with something like Spacey Sketcher. It's just so good being able to have that one cost silence. I, I was a little surprised that Sapo took it over the Traveler. I think. You know, you look at this and you say, okay, that pairs very well into something like Leviathan. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the rest of Sapo's hand and it's Descend the Skies and Supernova, <laughs> yeah. I didn't think that was really a card that we were going to be worried about. Maybe we do just want to have a less mana committal way of dealing with it. Uh, we even had the Concerted Strike that is now getting used on the Twisted Fate. That mm -hmm. certainly would have been able to stick around long enough to kill a Leviathan as you do have that a soul that can kind of just one-shot it. But mm -hmm. uh, Sapo player going for the more mana efficient way and we'll have to see how it ends up playing out for them. Yeah, Concerted Strike alongside Radiant Guardian, another one of the, the cruxes of this deck that really allow it to be successful. There's so much, it does so much for this deck, right? I mean, you see it here. Um, it's a little bit overkill, <laughs> the <laughs> Twisted Fate, but it's still getting value nonetheless. Um, and generally speaking, I, I will say there has been a lot of times where I've seen this card used in a less than optimal situation such as this, but it's normally because you know this deck is already ahead anyway so it doesn't really matter yeah. in the long run uh, but it just it does it does this it removes stuff there's pretty much nothing it can't remove because of all your units being ginormous in this deck and on top of that especially against something like aggro concerted strike just provides another access to the life steal on the side of radiant guardian so it just does so much for this deck and uh yeah we're moving twisted fate here 
So Drax is going to have to go for the removal on the A-Soul this turn. It's always really scary when you're trying to use Noxie and Guillotine as a way to remove anything in a Targon deck because they do have copies of Guiding Touch and Starlight. Just so much healing for their units to get them back up to the full HP. Drax will have a little bit of a tricky way to play it where you can, you know, you play your Death's Hand on it, then you throw out your Noxian Guillotine, then you get the Fervor in response after they heal it, and there's no healing that can come out in response to the Fervor because the unit's already at full health. It's just kind of the way the stack plays out. But I'm not sure if that's... Like, even if you remove this Aurelian Soul, that costs your entire hand as well as one of your units, and then I just play my other copy. Yeah, I mean... I'm gonna say we're in limbo. I'm, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Um, that sounds right, and this feels like a really early limbo, but just with the way that yeah. Drax's hand is sort of working out, and because Sapo has that Equinox, even the Leviathan is not a realistic threat here. Yeah, and and we're 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 at the point where we're burning cards. We don't even care. Yeah, we don't even no. care. Like whatever. We're, with like the celestial cards we're getting are better than the burned cards. So why does it matter? We actually even see another Traveler come down too, which is just going to continue to add more celestial cards. I imagine at this point he might try to get a unit. Okay. <laughs> Just take another traveler. Jesus. All aboard the travel train. I mean, can Sapo he can get... just continue to get these. Yeah, he's actually going to go for... Oh, no, he took the no. Serpent. Okay. I was going to say, if he took the Challenger, can he get 20 power on the board? And it, He actually could have. Yeah, the Pale Cascade actually adds to that a lot, and I think that's something players kind of forget about, is yep. that Asol checks the level up condition before. before all of the stat buffs go away for the end of a turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's something that I feel like is usually missed at the beginning of formats as well, especially when cards just get released. Uh, you know, what points in the turn different card effects actually trigger, and that's d very very important for Aurelian Soul in this deck. Uh, but very surprised he didn't go with the Warrior there though, because that would have just been like the easiest way to level up. I mean, obviously we see a lot of uh, removal on the side of Omega Drax, but it still wouldn't really have been unless he used all of it uh, enough to get rid of the Warrior. I think he just wanted to keep open as much mana as possible in case he did need to throw down the Supernova. Now is the Star Shaping available, but as we had mentioned, Drax does have those other spells in hand, such as the Death's Hand and the Noxian oh. Fervor. I would imagine you use the Fervor here. Yeah, another oh, great we are gonna use. Go for the Death's Hand. Another great use of the heal, though. Like, I just love seeing heal on units like this. Like, you're essentially denying an entire card. I mean, yeah, sure, Omega is you know, getting out the additional card to do the damage on the Aurelian Soul and still get the Noxian Guillotine off. But you still got a ton of value out of that card. And uh, we do have another Aurelian Soul in hand anyway, so I don't think we're really too worried. I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I think this Scourge might actually just end the game next turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we might not even need the second Aurelian Soul at this point. The, the attack token is on Sapo's side too, so it looks like, yep, he's going with the scores. It's going to be a nice big old 14-10 here, and uh, the rest of the field is going to be just about as big. Yep, this uh, this board out of Omega Drax is about to be mincemeat. Will at least sort of get, you know, full value out of the Noxian Fervor? You can go ahead and throw that onto one of your units that got challenged to kill this 5-3 Traveler, but, I mean, that's not enough. There, there's protection for that in sapo player's hand in the pale cascade and the star shaping even and it looks like omega yeah. drax is just going to accept yep. this game one loss yeah omega drax going down there to the aurelian soul deck and again there's a reason why this deck is so stinking popular lately it just performs so well uh you mentioned in comparison to the tf swain deck you, you thought it was you know kind of on par with it well uh, we just saw it win there. So we just saw it beat the TF Swain deck. And now, funnily enough, Sapo uh, looks to be queuing up the same exact deck that he just beat in the TF Swain deck. And it looks like on the side of Omega, we're going to get the Aurelian Soul deck. So we just saw this game, and now it's going to be reversed as the players. Uh, is it? Omega Drax doesn't have an Aurelian Soul deck. Oh, nope. Never mind. It's not Aurelian Soul. Okay. It's oh, it's Leona Fiora. Wow. Okay, this is uh, this is a little bit different from what we're used to. I have seen this deck before, but yeah, this is what Black Boss picked up the win with, right? I what mean, what turn? Rune Cup. Was it Rune Cup number two? Was Black Boss playing this? I believe so because everybody was, I believe, playing like Tarek Fiora, and then Boss was just playing Leona Fiora, and we kept questioning 
sort of the place oh. of these two cards because he wasn't playing Grizzled Ranger. Yeah, because wasn't that the very first tournament we did right after Call of the Mountain dropped? I believe so, yeah. Yep, yeah, I think you're right. Yep. So we'll see if it's able to, you know, do anything in this tournament here, especially against a deck as powerful as TF Swain. Uh, if it's able to pick up a victory, it'll definitely do a little bit for this deck. I will say, I think since Rune, Rune Cup, we haven't seen this deck a whole lot. Um, it's definitely around, but it's, you know, TF Swain, again, more popular. If people are in Targon, they're usually picking Aurelian Soul over this deck as well. And this is going to be a beautiful Make It Rain Barrel. Just going to protect our Shield Bearer by sacrificing another 3-2. Let's see if Sapo player has the luck on his side when it comes to this Make It Rain. Uh, ah, oh. not quite. And that is another Make It Rain today. We're going to have, like, in one of these terms, we're going to do, like, a Make It Rain counter. Of like wins versus losses, I, I feel like that's two losses so far that we've seen with Make It Rain. We're gonna. What is the opposite of a highlight reel? Uh, uh, bloopers. I uh, I know what you mean. Not, it's not necessarily yeah. bloopers. Yeah. Um, I want to make like a an unhighlight reel for Make It Rain. <laughs> <laughs> an unhighlight reel. Chad, if anybody knows the word, <laughs> let us know so we can put that together. Solari Priest is coming now. We'll see what the selections will be. And it looks like a... All right, yeah. Comet going to get taken. Blue card coming out on the side of Sapo for the Twisted Fate. We'll see what he draws. So, personally, I really like the removal suite that Demacia Targon has into something like the Twisted Fate Swain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why this deck has managed to hang on in the meta, where other Lux decks have sort of fallen to the wayside, is things like Comet and Supernova. Supernova, especially, will immediately end the game uh, if you can get that down onto Leviathan and Swain, that is way too much tempo lost for that player. But having things like Concerted Strike that are pretty low mana commitments that will actually kill the Leviathan are absolutely huge. We saw Ezreal decks consistently struggle with the TF Swain because the only thing that they had was Thermo Beam, which was going to be at, at the very least an eight mana commitment to kill the Leviathan. And even if you're killing a Swain, that's still seven. But having a fast speed way to do it at five, I think, is really a difference maker. And then, you know, having Lux to clean it up if you do throw out a block onto something. The fact that Radiant Guardian will survive an attack from the Leviathan and can then finish it off with a final spark. Just so, so much removal coming out of a deck like that. Not going to see it this time around. I think single combat, Concerned Strike, and Hush are the only spells that we're seeing out of Omega Drex in this deck. No copies of a post or anything fancy like that. And I think that's where we kept questioning the Fiora's place in this deck, where you don't really feel like you have a realistic avenue to victory with her, but she is inarguably better than Laurent Protégé in a lot of matchups. And maybe she's just the best three-drop challenger, and you don't play towards that win condition pretty much ever. Yeah, I, I got to agree with you. You know, not having Tarek in this deck and going with the Leona instead doesn't really give you a whole lot of options with the Fiora. I do want to point out, it's interesting you said that Concerted Strike is a, like, uh, a low mana commitment to, to remove Leviathan. Like, I feel like, you know, a, a couple months ago, a few months ago, five mana to remove a, a unit seems like a lot. Like, you know, Vengeance being at seven mana. I feel like anything for, like, more than four mana, a lot of people would think is a, a decently high mana commitment. But uh, I feel like a lot of the games are going so much later nowadays. We have decks like this Aurelian Soul. We have War Mothers coming back. Um, five mana to get rid of a Leviathan seems like a very, very nice price. And uh, we do see the single combat, though, come out on the Leona to the Swain. See if we're going to see this Noxian Fervor in response. It looks like we are. What do we target here, though? Looks like he's going with the Bright Steel. Oh, this feels uh, weird. This does feel awkward. I mean, we're setting up the Ravoon for the Death's Hand. And there's no healing, as I had mentioned, coming out of Omega Drax's deck. It is just those mm -hmm. three spells. So nothing is going to be able to save the Ravoon from this Death's Hand. It does feel a little bit weird that because the Leona effect is still on the stack, it is going to be a stun onto our Twisted Fate. Uh, you know, it wasn't something that, like, targeted the Swain and then it got removed so it fizzles. It just hits the generic strongest unit that you have out there. Yeah, and we do see the Death's Hand. So it was setting up for that Death's Hand that you mentioned. We'll see if that's going to help him here. Not having the Ravoon on the field means no more Daybreak shenanigans on the side of Omega Drax. We'll see what comes out next. He does have Leona available as an option. Uh, also Genevieve in hand. Yeah, I was about to say, we are cutting into those top end turns and uh, Screeching Dragon, Cythria the Bold, and Genevieve, as well as that Ravoon, are all options that Omega Drax will have available to him as the game goes on. Is Genevieve the best play here? Yeah, I, I like getting down the Solari Soldier first. And I, I, yeah, I would say that Genevieve has probably got to be the play. 
Nothing else looks super appealing. You know, you can get down the Ravoon and Leona a little bit at later times. You could have played Leona to push more damage, but Genevieve sort of accomplishes the same goal by just eating the Twisted Fate first and then going in for an attack. Yeah, Genevieve, man. Oh, all right, well, we were... Or, sorry, never mind. I was just going to say, we were just talking about five drops, and I remember Genevieve is a six drop, so I was going to say Genevieve is a hell of a uh, five drop, but if she was five, she'd be busted. Um... But we do see the Genevieve come in for the Twisted Fate. Gonna challenge and just, wow, that is a yep. big yeah, attack. I was about to say, it's a little risky, but if Omega Drax smells the blood in the water, yep. can actually just go for the lethal open attack. I think that he might have had to throw out the Death's Hand onto something first to set it up for a Ravenous Flock. Instead, just passes priority. And I think that would have been a really awkward line for a Sapo player to take. So I definitely don't fault him for not going for it. Just it is a little weird to be staring death in the face and not doing anything to protect yourself against that. Oh, we'll wow. have to save the block for this Genevieve now that the scout attack has gone off, though. There's really nothing oh, I feel like anything. that you could have done. Uh, you can, yeah, you can flock the Genevieve, but that's still going to be lethal. And yeah, all right. Omega Drax going to take it away there. Tying it up 1-1. One, one. And real quick, so I just, the way that that deck played, I know we were talking about the Fiora not really being the focus of that deck. Uh, what were some of the other units real quick? Because I know you have the deck list up. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, first of all, no War Chef. R.I.P. War Chef. Yeah, forget that card. Uh, number that one. Card? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, um, I mean, you've got the Solari package in, in the Soldier, the Shield Bear, the Priestess, all the way to Ravoon and Leona. Uh, you've got the Fleet Feather Tracker and the Bright Steel Protector. And then aside from your champions and those packages, it's just all top end. It's the Screeching Dragon, the Scythrian, yeah. the Genevieve. It's a pretty straightforward deck. And as we get into this Twisted Fate Swain mirror, something that I wanted to mention is that so far, Twisted Fate Swain is 0-4. That deck has wow. lost every game that we've seen today. We'll now only pick up a win because we are playing a mirror and it has no choice. But that's not wow. really what we kind of expected for what is widely regarded no. to be one of, if not the best tournament decks. I know it's fallen off a little bit lately in favor of that pirate aggro, but yeah. I mean, when we are seeing it come out, it's still performing well, except for today, apparently. Wow. Yeah. No, that's uh, super interesting that we've already seen it lose four times. Uh, one of the, one of the reasons I had asked about the followers lineup in that deck too is it really just is a glorified uh, demacia deck right like it's not really going for that fiora win con so generally speaking tf swain speaking of the 04 uh i feel like beats mid-range demacia decks so to see it lose there uh is just pretty interesting it can be a little awkward just because things like death sand aren't actually killing a lot of high priority targets noxian fervor because your units don't typically survive it uh, you know, is kind of an expensive removal spell resource-wise. And it's always scary to try and use it on a barrel because of things like single combat and concerted strike coming out of your opponent. I mean, we've seen TF Swain struggle with scouts in the past. Just any kind of deck where I have to use two removal spells on a good number of your units, I'm going to struggle if you mm -hmm. are aggressive enough that I can't get my Swain-Leviathan combo online, which we have not seen come down yet today. All right. Well, the turn going back over to Sapo. Uh, lots of units, lots of options in hand on the side of Sapo. R really, just a lot of stuff to do. We can also play this Swain going into curve on turn five next turn, uh, possibly ending the turn to go into an attack turn on turn six. We'll see if that's uh, something he sets up for here. But just deciding to go in with the attack of the Petty Officer for now. Going to trade with Omega's Petty Officer, and we'll see what Omega is going to do with priority now. I miss when Zonite Urchin would draw a card when you got her off Petty Officer. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? They buff, they buff her, and now all of a sudden, now everybody's pissed that he doesn't get the uh, the last breath effect. <laughs> yeah, although I, I do think Omega Drax wins out on the trade there. Doesn't get the stats mm -hmm. on board, but getting this Mage Seeker Conservator could come up pretty big a little bit later on. Curious to see what pops out of that. Well, Dreadway Deckhand going to hit next, which... Uh, we cannot see a miss from this Make It Rain. Nope. Unless... This... Uh, well, Unless. wait, what? He just passed. That seems really odd to me. That seems like it was a decent make I mean, technically, the Mage Seeker is going to get a card back, and the Zap Spray Fin kind of feels bad using a card to kill it. So I get it, I guess, but uh, still feels bad burning that two mana there. I had to go check Drax's hand to see if there was a Make It Rain that could come out in response, and then if that one would miss by not hitting the barrel. And mm -hmm. But there was no Make It Rain in his hand. As I had mententioned I can't see SJW's screen, so I have to constantly hop back and forth between <laughs> the two streams to actually get both hands. Yeah, we're currently investing in a fourth uh, television on my end, <laughs> so we'll see if that comes in soon. By the time Legends of Runeterra is finally laid to rest, shit will be like in that room from the Matrix where it's just yeah. wall-to-wall -wall screens. <laughs> 
Yep, that's that's the goal. And I'll have all the all the production boards covering my desk. So one of these days we'll get there. But yeah, we, he wants that. I want to be able to jump from building to building. You know, we all, we all just want to live out the matrix. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa! Building to building. What about dodging bullets, man? That's that I mean, seems like priority there. I've never been shot at. I don't really expect to be. So dodging bullets doesn't actually seem like a super useful thing for the kind of life that I live. Wait, don't you live in New York? Oh, <laughs> close enough. Been... <laughs> I mean, I've heard New York can be a pretty rough place, man. <laughs> the city of brother? No, that's no. Philadelphia. <laughs> the Angels is L.A. Wait, what is it? I was gonna say city of brotherly love. Yeah, that yeah, it's definitely Philadelphia. But have you ever been to Philly? I've been to Philly. Damn, oh yeah, I've lived next to Philly for most of my life. Yeah, love Philly. Although I wore a Patriots jersey, bad decision. Don't ever wear a Patriots jersey in Philly. Oh, you need to dodge bullets. Yeah, I yeah. If yeah, if you're going to Philly in a Pats jersey, you definitely need to dodge bullets. <laughs> so Zap Sprayfin hitting the field on the side of Zappo. Gonna return the Zap Sprayfin. Definitely uh, getting the attuned mana. So I, I will say kind of a feels bad man moment when you have full spell man and you're kind of forced to play Zap Sprayfin. As as small of a downside as it is, it's never feels good. There are so many turns where I'm looking at my four mana and my three spell mana and I'm looking yeah. at salvage and Zap Sprayfin in hand and I'm like, I wanna play them both. Yeah. How do I <laughs> yeah, do that? Yeah. There's a way, I know it. <laughs> I I'm gonna to have eight mana this turn. I have eight mana worth of cards that I wanna play. Make it make sense. <laughs> Uh, and another zap spray thing coming down. Speaking of wasting the attune, uh, Omega gonna blow the attune on that one, unfortunately. But Twisted Fate would be an interesting option to play. But looks like we're going with the Death's Hand for now. So Omega's had Twisted Fate on the field for a couple turns now, right? Is that at three? Uh, I I just tried hovering over it. <laughs> I haven't missed like I haven't brought up spectator mode in a while. But I definitely did just try to hover over that TF. What one day, one day, man. See these these last patch notes give me hope. The 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 gauntlet is basically a tournament testing ground now with bands. I feel like so, people are reading into that one a little bit too much. Hey 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 hey! I choose to read what I choose to read. Okay, <laughs> I'm staying positive. That means spectator mode is coming in T minus yeah. six patches. I mean, I I am the heel of this cast, so yeah, I got to be the one to be like, well, you know, that doesn't that's not exactly what it means. <laughs> So sitting on uh, seven mana now, though, on the side of Sappo. See if a Swain might hit the field. This seems like a decent time to, to stick a Swain, especially with uh, Omega only having two non-fearsome blockers. But we do see the Petty Officer, which I imagine will come down to prevent that, uh, that open attack from the Swain. back into Drax's stream. Okay, I'm stuck on Water Shuriken for now, but that's fine. I just won't know what's in Drax's hand. I remember a bit of it. I know there's a Riptide Rex in there. Noxian the Fervor, Dreadway, Riptide, Noxian Guillotine, Vengeance, Okay, Petty yeah, Officer, so we're, just, we're one turn away from this Riptide coming online yeah. and just uh, yeah. sort of cleaning up the board of Sapo player. I mean, the Swain is down. I don't even think we've seen a, a leveled Swain today. Uh, no, we have not. And we've actually only seen, I think, one Riptide come down earlier, if I remember correctly. So Yeah, so far this deck just, I mean, not doing what it normally does. So the Petty Officer actually did not come down from Omega Drax, which leads me to believe this Vengeance is just going to get thrown out right here. Um, which I don't know if I... I mean, I guess that makes sense, right? If you had uh, played the Petty Officer, you're sitting on 8 mana this turn, which doesn't really let you even play the Riptide, so there's really just a very awkward amount of mana but just letting the strike go through from the swain i think you're in one of those awkward staring contests where you just really don't want to let your opponent get down a leviathan mm -hmm. while you don't have one down but neither player actually has a leviathan we could just go for death's hand into the riptide rex but it's kind of awkward because drax wants the leviathan to come down before he plays the riptide but sapo just doesn't have it and I'm curious to see if we just see a pass on the side of both players while they try to mind game each other. Yes. Oh, this TF is oh, this TF is gonna let Omega know that it is safe to fire off the Riptide. Yeah, I like the pass yeah. here. Yeah. There you go. There's the and I, I like the I feel like the Shen emote on the side of Sapo was kind of a little bit of a mind game there. Um See I, that's I, what that's why you mute emotes immediately. I, yeah. that, there's no mind games. <laughs> Listen, I muted somebody on um 
on ladder the other day because they just kept like spamming emotes and i literally the first person i thought of was you i was like yeah take that to your wallet <laughs> all right you, you don't even spent money can't even use it let's go and yep riptide rex gonna hit the board gonna do some damage to face there on the side of sapo so we'll see if that's gonna be impactful later on obviously now we'll be able to see this twisted fate come down not going to be able to kill the other Twisted Fate with a gold card because it will hit the Riptide. So we'll see what uh, we have to go with here. It looks like the blue card, which makes sense because he's got one spell mana open. So League of Legends, the MOBA that is based off the incredibly popular card game Legends of Runeterra. Um, <laughs> I love how you said that, by the way. That, that's they, they added the Eternal system, which for those of you that yeah. don't know, it's, it's basically like a... Um, what are you not a mastery system a uh, achievement system like you'd see in any other kind of uh you know video game uh, like steam has achievements for everything you know stuff like yep. that uh you pay money for the eternals and then your opponent can see them and i can't turn those off so i really want Ooh. league of legends to learn from legends of rune terror here where <laughs> you pay for emotes i can mute those if you pay for achievements i want to be able to mute those too because i don't care how many kills this guy has on sona that i'm never gonna see i don't i don't <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to me let me turn those off you know, Legends of Runeterra lets me mute the emotes. Let me mute the Eternals. Yeah, actually, I didn't even think of that, that you can't mute those in Legends, or sorry, League of Legends. But. So now we get to throw the argument that, oh, they spent money on them out the window because I spent money on my emotes, and <laughs> I, I can get those muted, so. This is looking bad on the side of Sapo, though. I mean, he definitely needs to start tossing out these arachnoid sentries. Looks like we are going to see one come down likely on the Riptide Rex. It feels like a lot of the times that Twisted Fate Swain struggles is when it draws too many multiples. Constantly, we see these decks sit on multiple Death's Hand or multiple Noxian Fervors. This time around, Sapo sitting on triple Arachnoid Century. And it, it just feels really awkward. You are a deck that needs card diversity. Yeah, and we'll see what Omega decides to do in response to this Arachnoid Sentry. Not much of an attack now with that Sentry coming down. Still two Sentries in hand as well on the side of Sapo. We do get the second Twisted Fate for the red card. And uh, this, I mean, it doesn't really do a whole lot for Omega. I guess technically I mean, it, it sets up... Board. Yeah. Oh, 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 is there a, there's a... Yeah, there's a barrel, there's a ah, keg. Ah, there's a keg, okay, never mind. I was like, wait a second, is he setting up guillotine? Wait, no, he has no mana. What is going on right now? But yeah, this is going to be great for Omega, uh, but we are going to see the Ravenous Flock come and return on the Riptide. Uh, interesting to me that we're not using the Noxian Fervor on one of our units to kill out something. Okay, so we are just going to yep. use it anyway. Uh, I thought we were going to hit okay on that flock, and I was like, this seems a little weird to me. I understand that there's probably going to be a sentry coming down next. I wouldn't even you know think that the swain is completely out of the world oh maybe we are just uh killing the barrel seems uh, really weird that, i feel like i'd rather kill the petty officer i don't think you value your tf that much to kill the barrel like that tf is not gonna stick around there's plenty of removal in your opponent's deck yeah right. like i because uh, i can't even block the fearsome poro with it one because it has fearsome two because my tf has a damage pushed onto it and I guess this means we're going to see Swain come down now. Yeah, we. I, I like the Swain coming down here because you kill the Petty Officer. That's the only fearsome blocker on your opponent's board. You know, you throw down the Swain that is now leveled. You block one of these units and you go for a pretty big seven damage push next turn. Yeah, I think. You know, I'm going to play the Sentry again. Just valuing it looks like that spell mana. I don't know. I feel like I would have wanted to play the Swain there. So I don't hate the sentry, because now if we go in with both units, then I get to just block your Poro if not this happens. But I like a developmental attack with the Swain, because I get to play the Swain. Omega Drax only has so many fearsome blockers in the entire deck, and if you play one of them, then I get to throw down my Arachnoid sentry. I do mm -hmm. sort of get blown out by Omega having his own Arachnoid sentry, but when I'm in a situation like this, I feel like these are risks that I have to take. Yeah, you know, especially with him playing from behind, got to understand it. You know, we also see Vengeance on the side of Omega, too. So I feel like we're just going to see that ripped off pretty easily here uh, in response to an attack. And that will all but seal the deal, I think, for Omega. I mean, we could see Sapo drawn to a Leviathan. That would possibly get him back into this game. I don't think he's going to have that much time with uh, Omega firing off that Twisted Fates pick a card. Wow. Yep and yeah this <laughs> there we go gotta love the emotes that's what i like to see so this i mean twisted fate swain is going to be one in five so far on the day and i, I want to call it zero in five 
but you know when it's, there's a mirror match like this it's it's well you know. you're adding the win but you're also adding the loss so it, it yeah. evens out technically but let's let's just keep in mind that one of the wins was a mirror match and if it continues to lose all the games technically it didn't win a game versus a non you know yeah. tf swing deck and suddenly i have some players that i need to reach out to about their lineups for the qualifier this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey guys uh i don't know if you saw this i, I but... changed my mind i watched i watched five games and decided twisted fate swain actually sucks we can't play it anymore <laughs> Yep, and there is the surrender and Omega. No, oh, wait, no, not the surrender. Hold on, I'm gonna wait to call it. It'll just be a kill. Yeah, it'll, it'll just be a kill, but. And Omega gonna take it 2-1 there over Sapo player. Wow, all right, yeah, so the not the uh, no wins, I should say, for Swain continue uh, throughout those games with Sapo and Omega there. We're gonna see if that's gonna be a theme throughout the rest of the tournament. All right, and that is it. Again, pretty awesome gameplay. If you want any information on this league, you can go ahead and click the links below in the description. Uh, we have the Discord link as well as some of the deck lists uh, in an Excel spreadsheet as well if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. Uh, so, as always, everybody, stay healthy, stay positive. I hope shit just works for you, and peace out.